lot of people in fact uh, when i speak of these words when i say the first thing what anybody should be doing is to come and stay here as a chief minister if i were to say this unfortunately we have an opposition in the uh, we are and also a negative media with vested interests who support the opposition i think many of you also are aware of it that they make a such a hue and cry that in, in fact that uh, we shifting over to wisac they try to make an issue out of it saying that somebody is coming to wisac because they want to grab the lands here they want to do that they want to do that and these kind of stories shamelessly are written shamelessly are projected and all for what so they don't want the chief minister to come here they go to the court court cases are filed all for what they don't want chief ministers to come here now why if the chief minister comes here will grow because there's ownership which is going to come for this area there would be a christening of the city as executive capital so they don't want the chief minister to come here because they have vested interests elsewhere they bought land before the capital could be announced elsewhere thousands of acres in private hands benami lands and they're all scared the moment this becomes the executive capital the land rates there would further plunge and because of this vested vested interest today wisac has taken the beating so going forward i am here to assure everybody here that there would be changes because this is inevitable if one were to compete with hyderabad compete with chennai compete with bangalore is very important that wisac becomes the economic growth engine that is it. in fact if i were to have any vested interest probably i would be having i would be speaking about kadappa see for me i am this the state is ours to everyone here and one in my place should start should think in terms of what is good for the next generation how would we want our children to be positioned how will, how are the state's revenues going to be from and how exactly can we boost these revenues to support the growth of andhra pradesh if we do not think like this in terms of growth for wisac then who would think if the vision of the leader is wrong if the vision of the leader is negative then wisac today unfortunately only person standing for visakhapatnam as executive capital is only me unfortunately this is the reality fighting against the entire opposition fighting against vested interests of the media everybody wanting 
that Visakhapatnam is not declared as executive capital. This is the reality. Everybody should keep this in mind, understand this reality. Now moving further, Vizak would have to develop. I am assuring you, case is going on, we have too many people trying to oppose everything. But I am assuring you, post-election, my stay would be in Vizak. In fact, my swearing in ceremony also would be in Vizak. This is my commitment to Vizak. And now, what is the vision for Vizak? See, we, we need to have a 10 year vision. We would have to own this city. Kherson, the city as executive capital, become part of the city. And have a 10 year vision. You know, we need to have a roadmap which is workable, which is doable. It cannot be a roadmap where we just dream big but yet achieve nothing. Because it is impractical. Not so. We need to have a practical solution, we need to have a practical approach and we need to have a vision which is realizable in 10 years time. Of course, this vision is one vision which cannot be alone done by the state government. It would have to be the state government, it would have to be the central government, it would have to be a PPP model, it would have to be encouraging private people also to become part of the vision. All these people become part of this vision, only then we can realize Vizak is the next competitor in a decade's time to Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai. In fact, uh, why I wasn't, why I was opposed to the idea of having Amaravati as a capital? There is no, there is nothing against it. In fact, I am one person who advocates the view that uh, Amaravati should also have a legislative capital. I mean, in fact, I am also one person who advocates the view that Karnol should also have a judicial capital. Nothing against it. But then. The fact of the matter is, Amaravati is on a virgin land, 50,000 acres of barren land, nothing there. And according to them, just to provide for the basic infrastructure, that is these roads, the water, electricity, and these kind of basic infrastructure alone, according to their own calculations with the DPR that they have produced costs almost 2 crores per acre which is on a 50,000 acres of barren land if one were to just lay these basic infrastructure requirements put in place we're talking about 1 lakh investments 1 lakh crores of money which would have to be put in before any buildings could come up or before we could talk about anything else other than the basic roads or the basic electricity or the basic water or the basic stuff. 